Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the April 9th, 2013 Fellowship of the Geeks live broadcast. Uh, my name is Thomas Chick, and joining me via Google Hangout is Mike Marlowe. Hello. And somewhere far, far away is Les Webster. Good evening. <laughs> Do you want to say where you're? Do you want to say where you're at, Les? He's, he's broadcasting from a secret location, <laughs> from the Bat I'm, Cave. I'm currently in Honolulu. Ooh, must be nice. Uh, the temperature is 91, and it's rising right now. So, wow. And I'm glad I'm inside. Well, we're Ick, waiting, we're waiting go. for thunderstorms to start later on tonight. Yep. It's it's got up to about 80 or 81 today, and then tomorrow it's only going to be 50s with rain. So look what you're coming back to, Les. Woohoo! I'm kind of ready for it. <laughs> um, do apologize for not uh, being on last week. Uh, just as as Mike said, life happened, so none of us were able to make the broadcast, and we apologize for that. But um, each of us had our own little difficulty last week. That's it right. Was, it was really true. Lessons sucked because it was being in Hawaii. So I know. He, he got the better end of that deal all the way around. Yeah. Uh, and you may notice that uh, James Pickering from uh, the website of Galaxy. Uh, called Dallas.com is not with us tonight. I uh, hope everything's all right, James. I know you've been a little under the weather. I uh, hope you're getting better, and we'll talk to you soon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've been dealing with sinus uh, sinus infection and all the good stuff that comes from that. Uh, tonight, there's a couple things we want to go over. Uh, we definitely want to kind of recap... Uh, uh, this year's comic craziness, which finished up um, early last week. Man, it was yeah. crazy. It was crazy. Oh, um, was crazy. <laughs> how crazy was it? Was it? Same was... Johnny Carson. Keep on going. Oh well, you started it. <laughs> <laughs> um, appreciate everybody who participated. Um, it was really tough, but we'll go into. All of that a little bit later, and, and announce who, uh, which one of the uh, um, real world players won this year's contest. But uh, first, uh, kind of want to go over um, a bit of news that unfortunately we had we had to break to less before showtime because, of course, being in communicado, he did not know this. Um, the passing of, uh, and, and he's truly worthy of this word, legend, uh, Carmon Infantino, last Thursday at the age of 87. Um, if you think of 60s DC Comics, you're probably thinking about his art. Uh, he had his hand, he did, he did just about everything for DC back in the 60s and a little bit of the 70s. Uh, was even the publisher for for the for DC uh, in the early to mid seventies. Uh, co-created the Silver Age Flash, Barry Allen. Uh, co-created uh, the Silver Age Batgirl. Uh, designed the new look for Batman, which was essentially adding the yellow ovo around the bat. Uh, but a very distinctive artist. I mean, you look, you can look in, in, at it, and you go, "Oh wow, that well, that's obviously Infantino." Um, Les, I know this is right down your alley. I know uh, th this is an artist that you've you've admired for a long, long time. Uh, since you're just now hearing the news, we'll kind of give your two cents about this. <clears throat> Infantino, like you said, was the co-creator of Barry Allen Flash. And that was, to me, seminal because it was about that time that I was getting into comics. 
mid to late 50s. And I recall uh, his work, obviously, and in one of the annuals that they did, he showed how to draw the flash. And he showed you the steps in which he would draw the flash in his movement, which was remembered quite well. The, the several figures of the flash in different poses and the streak of uh, line work through them. Uh, obvious, yes, Infantino's work was always recognizable. And that's one great thing about it. He didn't change styles to accommodate a, a, an, a character. He was carrying the same artwork each time, and it fit. Everything that he did fit the work that he was doing. And he, yeah, he did other titles too, uh, such as Batman, and it stayed the same. The, the work was consistent. The work was of one of the highest uh, that I'd ever seen. Uh, he will be greatly missed. Uh, I know I have several books on the artwork of his, and I treasure those as it is. Uh, I would say that we have really lost a great person. Uh, I have seen him at a show or two, and he was always open to people. He was always considerate to the fans. Uh, I, I was going to great respect. I apologize for interrupting. I was going to ask you if you ever if you ever met him and, and what he was like. Yes, uh, it was one of those you know standing in line to get something signed, and he, like I said, he was very gracious, very considerate. Uh, he would look you in the eye when he was talking to you. He would not just have his head down signing something and shove it across and hope that you go away. He was standing there and he would talk. People would have several items and he would try to accommodate each time as many things as they had. Uh, in a Q&A he was very personable and he was one of those people that you wanted to sit down and just have a long talk with because you knew that you would have more than more questions than he probably wanted to answer, but he would be one of those piece, people that would take the time to answer as many as he could. Well, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I wish I had a chance to to meet him face to face and just thank him for everything he's done. Um, I remember growing up and I, I didn't see as much as his stuff because of course I was you know I was a child of the 70s so I was seeing more of the, the Dick Dillons and Irv Novak's and, and um, Jim Aparo's and, and Kurt Swan and, and, and some of them but uh, I, I by that time, he was kind of doing, uh, like I said, he was a publisher for DC until like 76 or 77. Then he went to freelance, and then one of the things was he did, he went over to Marvel and did some books, including Star Wars. And, of course, I was reading the Star Wars Marvel run. So that's I think that may have been the first time I actually had come across his art and, and was just kind of blown away. And, of course found out more about him later on and uh, of course he went back to do the last couple years of Flash before they canceled it just before the crisis on Infinite Earths um, he really hadn't I don't think he did it a lot the last 10-15 years are you aware Les? Not of anything that he's done that late no so he, he may have just retired at, at some point and just did 
you know, did, did the con circuit or whatever he wanted to do, that kind of thing. But I, I, I can't remember the last. I can't remember him doing anything in the last. Certainly, the last ten years, but I, I could be wrong. I'm, there may be something I'm just totally forgetting. I was just checking his his oh, site. Okay. Go ahead, Mikey. Uh, I know you you really hadn't seen a lot of his work because you were later into uh, getting into comics. Um, yeah, I'm not the historian of the group. That's for sure. That would that would that would be less, mostly because he lived it. But anyway, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> uh, the, I I saw a collection out today at one of the shops. I was kind of surprised. I had not heard of this, but Showcase came out with an edition called The Trial of the Flash. Yes, and he was the artist for this uh, from just before issue 300 to the end. So it was like almost four years. Yeah, that's that t pretty t pretty much takes up to the end of the of the series, and then which it was canceled, and then they did the whole crisis and killed off Barry Allen. Right. So yeah, that's it. I've got it. Oh, I've I got the, okay. yeah. I've got the. If you need to borrow it, I've I got it. But yeah. No, I I have it in issue form somewhere, but uh, it's a great read. It's an excellent read. Yeah, I have I, I have most of it. It's been so long since I read it, but you know I saw that and it's since it's all together, you know I figured what the hell. Yeah. Well, I'm very sad to hear that his, of his passing. Did they say of of uh, what form it was? What? I had I had not heard anything official. Um, I actually hadn't heard anything unofficial. Uh, I just hadn't heard one way or the other. Let me do a real ch quick check. I don't see anything listed. Um, and um, also the same day, also in the comic industry, was the passing of 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 a name that uh, not too many people would be familiar with. I I. Unfortunately, I I was not aware of his name. Um, his name was George Gladier, uh, a longtime writer for Archie Comics. He started back in um, '59, and he, along with uh, Dan DiCarlo, created uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch in 1962. Uh, he also wrote for a crack magazine, and uh, a lot of a lot of the the stuff that he wrote for the for the magazine was uh, the art was done by uh, John Severin. I'm like I, I remember reading a bunch of this, of, of the cracked magazines during the the 70s and, and early 80s. Actually, I preferred Cracked over. Uh, Mad Magazine, and there was also another one called Crazy. And I think Marvel did that. Uh, I didn't particularly care for that one, but I preferred Cracked. So I probably read a lot of his stuff, and I just, I just did not know. I mean, I was familiar with Severin's art uh, from other avenues, a lot, a lot of the westerns, and 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 that kind of thing. And of course, you know, I saw the art, and I'm like, oh, I remember that from. Cracked and, and some of the other other, other magazines, so I'll, uh, that's where I got kind of established name for him, for Severin. But uh, Gladier, Gladier was uh, apparently he was still writing. I don't know how recently, but he, uh, but um, he had been writing for them uh, for for Archie Comics for a long time. Uh, didn't say a cause of death for him as well, and. Uh, Are you familiar with his work, Les? Not really. Uh, I know of Sabrina, but outside of that, I'm I'm not really familiar with his work. 
Uh, it says that he did things for Jughead and some other items, but uh, I'm, no, I'm I'm not really sure of his of his work. I may have and just not known the writer because I you know. I, I've never really been a big Archie fan, but you know I, I read them every once in a while. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I know I did a lot, of, uh, a bit of it during the seventies, and I'm sure that was when he was, you know, kicking them out. So yeah. You know, uh, so I, I'm yeah I'm sorry to hear of his passing, and I kind of wish I'd known more. I, you know, I can. I probably look. I'm going to look into this and find out that I know some of his stuff and just. Oh my. Okay. All right. The. Yeah, it'll come to you that way. Yeah. Uh, any anything anything else you want to kind of add to that or? Uh... Um. No, I'm good. Did you want to talk about some of the other? Passings that have gone on that were not really comic related, or we want to go ahead and start talking about the uh, this year's craze. Let's touch real quick on some of them. Okay. Uh, we lost three people recently that were. Oh, what do you, what do you want to say? Influential in our world. Obviously, the the one that surprised me was was it, I guess it was yesterday Margaret Thatcher passing. Uh, the Iron Lady was one of those that had people for her or against her wherever she was, and that even included uh, union members here in the U.S. or uh, pro-Irish uh, factions. Uh, then, of course, you also had Roger Ebert, who passed uh, after a long bout, bout with cancer. Uh, he was he and Gene Siskel were the ones that gave movies thumbs up or thumbs down and kind of established that. Uh, and then, of course, the third one was Annette Funicello, who, well, uh, she was on Mickey Mouse Club when I first saw her, so that tells you that dates me. But uh, she was just less than ten years older than me, and that kind of surprised me. I thought she was much older than that. I but those I remember hearing that that with her it was uh, it was it's an MS. Thing. MS. She's been battling oh. MS for a long yeah. time. So that was yes. a long illness as well. Yeah, that is true. Yes. Uh, I you're not gonna, seen her. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say you're not going to mention the beach movies with Frankie. Oh, certainly, but I think the majority of the people would know her. You know, if they're around in the '70s, would know her from GIF commercials, and that's about it. Uh, yeah, the beach movies with Frankie Avalon, uh, the Mickey Mouse Club, of course, and then she done several things. Uh, she had several uh, philanthropies and uh, causes herself. And, I mean, those those are three huge names to me right now. And I'm just sad that this is happening. Mikey? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to throw in that, uh, because I'm such a junkie. Um, both Mrs. Thatcher and Mr. Ebert um, individually and separately blew up Twitter in various ways when they passed. Um, there was a lot of there was there was a lot of love for Roger Ebert on Twitter that day, and there was a lot of mixed stuff on Twitter for Margaret Thatcher. That was I really was little, I was a little surprised. I have to say, I mean. I remember, I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to remember her being in office, and 
So I was, and, and given the average age of the people on Twitter, I was a little surprised that so many people felt so strongly about it, about her and her, and her work, um, in the in both the positive and the negative. Like Les said, it was. I was just a little surprised at how much reaction there was. It had really been out of the public eye for a couple for of For a long, decades. yeah. Um, I saw some of the some of the feedback on Twitter. I definitely saw it on on Facebook. Um, my Facebook page, if there was any kind of mention about uh, Margaret Thatcher, it was usually negative, and that kind of told me who my liberal friends were, which I already knew anyway. But um, I didn't. And on Twitter, I, I know I saw one comment saying. If you're remembering fondly of Margaret Thatcher, then you you didn't really know her, or you're an idiot, or some some. It was some kind of comment like that. I was like, okay, <laughs> oh, wow. Um, but that's just yeah. You know. She was a huge ally for the U.S. during the Cold War. She was a staunch follower of Ronald Reagan. She. When Reagan would ask for something, she really did not stall at uh, granting it or giving it. And to to say that you should not pay attention to her, which is essentially what I'm hearing these people make comments about, you know, saying that you don't know her, then you're foolish. You don't understand the whole idea of what was going on at that time. Because there was a lot of pressure on the U.S. through those years. Well, I think a lot of it is is directed toward her policies if, for England it, itself, and, and and the problems that it was having, and how she responded. I think that's where it was coming from. Is yeah. that what you were getting, Mike? Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, I mean, I follow more people than I would have ever dreamed um, who are British and Canadian, and so that's probably where a lot of the reaction was coming from. And yeah, and the flip side of that is even with the Americans. I mean, yeah, she was very closely associated with Ronald Reagan, who was like the penultimate Republican for the last 50 years. And given the way the whole Democrat Republican thing has polarized in the last several years, it, it kind of doesn't surprise me too much. Good point. I hadn't really been on Twitter too much today to see what the reaction was for Annette Funicello. What did you see, Mike? Um, I'm sure it was all kind, but I just don't know how. Yeah, what little I saw was kind. It wasn't a huge. It wasn't. It wasn't a huge reaction. Yeah. Not that I saw anyway. It was, and none of it was negative. Yeah. But that's not surprising. She yeah. Was an, she was an entertainer. It's, you have to be pretty. Either pretty bad or pretty dr drastic and well, to get negative response. From well, you know, well, and you, you got, you're going to have to have some kind of be known for or or, or, or or I've heard of bad things about a person, and you never really heard anything bad about her. You know, she was always kind of kind and sweet and all that, and of course she, you know, the roles that she's associated with. So, right, very much a product of the Disney upbringing. Yeah. So, those are sad passings indeed. It's been it's been kind of a kind of a rough week all over, all the way around. Um, with that horrible segue, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about this year's uh, comic craziness. Um, once again, I want to appreciate everybody who who got involved with this year's contest. Um. I, f I figured I figured doing pulp characters instead of the traditional uh, superheroes or or whatever else uh, would be a, a, a nice change of pace. Um, I personally enjoyed it. I mean, I, I, if anything, it seemed like it was to to me personally. Um, I thought it was it was harder to decide. On some of the contests, uh, what did you guys think? Yeah, I mean, it was 
it was a little different for sure. I mean, because honestly, you got 64 pulp characters out there. Even somebody like me is not going to be familiar with all of them. So I'm pulling for favorites early on and, and, and picking people just because, okay, this is the guy. I know who they are. And I mean, I'm going to let them do a little research, but obviously there are characters I'm going to prefer. And, and so, yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, you don't have the, it's, it's not quite the same. You don't quite have the big swings in like power levels that you would have with the super. It's like if you've got Superman going up against, I don't know, the Scarecrow or something, it, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. Um, but if you get like Indiana Jones going up against Doc Savage, it's a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going based on popularity versus reputation or whatever. It's a little different game. What were some of the memorable comments in the pair-ups? Tom, that was aimed at you. Oh, I think he's going to look. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had my, my microphone muted. Because I was having some, I was having some feedback here, so I'm, I do apologize. That's funny. That's what he's asking you about was feedback. Ah. Ah. Um. Well, I know one thing. I know, I know. I was getting some several questions about asking about Black Beetle, not knowing who he was. I'm like, well, I understand. There's it's a, a book out right now, man. Come on. It's an awesome book too, by the way. It is. It is very much is so. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Um, I wish I had, I wish I had pulled some of these out earlier to get some of the comments. Um, and I apologize for that. Well, let me go. Well, let me go ahead and do this one. Um. This is for the, 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 the it was the last champ that was the championship round. Um, uh, here, here, you should see this. This is from our friend Jeremy. I mean, he wrote almost a novel on. On, the, on this one fight between the Shadow and the Doc Savage, which was our championship round. I can totally see that. Uh, I mean, he spends a paragraph on how he thinks the Shadow can win and and then how how Savage can win. Okay, here we go. The problem. How does this fight go down without one or the other being killed in the process is beyond difficult. The reason for that is while both are known to let the big bads live to suffer the consequences. There are also a point where you have to look at the fighter across from you and realize that relenting isn't in the vocabulary. These two are the best informed, well versed in tactics and combat, and know what's at stake if the other one is left. So it comes down to which is the most logical winner of this matchup, which is difficult at best. Logically, the two should walk away seeing what the other does and realizing this fight shouldn't happen. <laughs> In the rim of that, neither one could make a villain quake. Neither one could make a villain quake in their boots again if the villain found out that either backed down. Nice comments. He thought these through. Well, this is that's Jeremy. I, I don't expect anything less from him. Uh, what was your what was your think uh, what was your thoughts about it, Les? What did you how did you think things turned out? Were you with the the idea of, of between those two? Uh, it, you've got the mind control uh, and the spiritualistic versus the brain and brawn. Uh, the the question there is if. Savage had his crew available to him to to defeat. Well, both have crews. Are those crews available? I was about to say both of them have have assistants. So yeah. Yeah. 
So, you know, the, the question there is, are they going to be involved in this also? Uh, I don't know of any story where either the Shadow or Doc Savage did something completely on their own. So I would suspect that the assistance would be pull in. I would say that even with this idea, I would have to go with Savage as the winner. I would say that his thought process is, is something, if you read the novels, it's three times as fast as anybody else. And I would say that's it. that would include Cranston. So you 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 went for you went for Savage. Yeah, I'd go for Savage. Yeah. Mikey, who did you pick again? I believe I picked Shadow. Mm hmm I picked Shadow as well, but it was very difficult. Um, oh yeah, it was a tough choice. I, and, and, the, and you know the thing is, when I put this thing together originally, and and for the record, uh, I did not see the bracket. I actually found a uh, website online that all you have to do is type in type in all the names, and it automatically sees a bracket for you, uh, either alphabetically or randomly. And I did randomly, so you know I didn't. <laughs> so I didn't try to play any favorites or that kind of stuff. But when I, when I saw the final bracket and saw how, how it was going to go, I was like, "This is this it's going to be Savage and Shadow." I just I just knew then that's that was going to be the championship. And surprisingly, I was right. So uh, I know there was there was a uh, there was some there was some surprises. I was surprised. I was. Uh, pleasantly surprised that Black Beetle made it to the, the final four. Um, Especially given that hardly anybody knew who he was. I mean, yeah. Weird. Well, I mean, some did and some didn't. So, obviously, some did some research and, and, and so, you know, you know, whatever. Um,. I don't know. Maybe it was just me. I was surprised that Solomon Kane made it to the final eight or the lead eight. But I mean, he went he went against originally Rick O'Connell, then the Avenger. So, I mean, a guy with a sword and all that versus a guy with, well, I don't know. But uh, overall, I was I was pretty pleased how things turned out. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. It was it was a challenge on some of these some of these battles. Um, but I had a blast doing it. I don't know about anybody else, but I did. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's fun. It's always fun to read the reasonings. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll put together. What I'll do is I'm going to try to put together a list of some of the comments and maybe post them on the website. Here, I just I just hadn't I hadn't had time to do that. I've been everything else has been going on, so I should do that. Just kind of yeah, just pick out some of the good ones and throw them up there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thunder. Yeah. Um, there was. Uh, I guess we need to go ahead and announce who the winner was. We could do that. Uh, yeah. Who did you have as third? Who did I have as third? Third place. Mm -hmm. Third place was our own Mike Marlow. Mm -hmm. Yay! Congratulations. Congratulations, Mike. Yay! I'll take that in cash, please. Okay. <laughs> I'll send it. I'll send it in the mail. That the stamp would cost more than the cash prize. That's it? right. Uh, second place was the aforementioned Jeremy Scott, Big Dog from Sci-Fi FX. That's great. Congratulations to him. Uh, and in first place was um, me. Uh, I barely won out, but uh, 
it, it, it was it was tight. It was I mean there was between first and third was only about a four point difference. That's pretty close. That's very good. Congratulations. So, um, I, it was it was it was it was a blast. I, you know, it was a blast to do this and uh, try to see what we can come up for for next year. Uh, just stay tuned. There was a couple of things I wanted to go over. If we were going to be on last week, it would be a little bit fresher fresher news that I thought was kind of interesting. That came out of um, the WonderCon, which was obviously not last weekend, but the weekend prior weekend. Uh, one thing that really blew my mind, and really happy to hear about this, is that Dark Horse announced that starting in September, uh, they will do an eight-issue miniseries based off the original script of Star Wars called The Star Wars. Uh, I just, when I first heard this, I was like, oh, you got to be kidding, because this was right around this. I mean, this was announced the weekend. Of course, that's the weekend just before April Fool's Day, and of course, everybody's just thinking, hey, this is just a joke and all that. But, I mean, right off the, the, the press list, the, pre, uh, the press rece- uh, release I got, it's like, this is no April Fool's joke. We are doing this. So I, I, it's going to be cool, uh, and they've already released some of the a little bit of the uh, the first page of the art, and the art looks great. Uh, if anybody uh, uh, is not aware, but uh, the script of Star Wars went through a ton of changes, the, uh, maybe more than what a normal script does. Um, this original script had uh, the hero as Anakin Starkiller with a mentor by the name of Luke Skywalker, an uh, alien named Han Solo, a general named Darth Vader. Um, everybody had a lightsaber, although it was called Laser Sword in the script. So uh, I've read two or three versions of, 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 of a script, but I've never read the rough draft. Uh, but I am totally fascinated to find out what what this was originally, what the, what the story was originally, because I know there was one version of the script that I read. There was literally uh, the original trilogy was in that script, and then there was elements that showed up in the prequels was it was in that version of the script, and I'm not sure which what draft it was or so. So I mean. He had George Lucas had a ton of stuff in that script originally, so I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of excited about it. I'm ready for that. I'd like to hear or see that. Who's doing the art? Um, I have to pull it up real quick. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. That's uh, okay. Don't worry. Oh, okay. I know. Um. The executive editor of Lucas Books, Lucas Bo- Lucas Books. Wow, <laughs> easy for you to say. No, it wasn't. Uh, well, is writing the adaptation, and I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but I remember his title. I just mispronounced it badly. Um, the other thing was uh, coming this summer from IDW. Written by Mark Wade, a Rocketeer Spirit crossover. Really? <laughs> that got Les's attention, didn't it? <laughs> really? Is this, a one sh- is this a one shot? No, I think it's like a four issue mini. Okay. Yeah, I could enjoy that. You could talk yourself into that one. Yeah, how did they get rights to the spirit, though? They don't. It's 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 done in conjunction with DC. Okay. Because they still have the rights to the spirit. They may not have the rights to any of the other pulp characters, but they still have the spirit. But um, boom. That's good. 
I'm ready to just read that one. Yeah, it should be it should be a blast, especially with Wade writing it because he's kind of on fire right now. He's uh he's got some stuff going on. Yep. Um, did, did Wade do the crossover with Spirit and Batman? That one shot? No, that was uh, that was um. Oh, New Frontier. Darwin uh, Cook. 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 Cook did it. Okay. Because that was a lead into the Spirit series that DC did. Yeah. Um, what what else was I gonna talk mention about? Um, oh shoot! Um, of course the whole announcement of in in um, I posted something about it and got a little bit more official word today about uh, Gail Simone writing a Red Sonja book starting in July. That ought to be fun. Who is publishing? Oh, it's Dynamite. Dynamite, Dynamite still has the character. Okay. Yeah, they're just they're just ending the current series and then starting up new uh, this summer with um, uh, Gail writing it. I don't remember exactly who's doing the art, but the the covers for the first issue are going to be there's going to be variants by Amanda Connor. Uh, uh, Nicola Scott, uh, Stephanie Bushima, uh, Bushima um, Fiona Staples. I mean, a star studded list of female artists doing the variants for the covers. And they, they, look, they look beautiful. Uh, if you've not seen them, go to the, web, go to the website. I posted the item today with all the, all the covers, and they're just gorgeous. I can't, I can't pick. I can't pick just one that I would say, okay, this is the one I gotta have because they're all so beautiful. But that'll be fun because I don't think she's ever written the character before. Am I am I wrong there? No, I think you're right. I don't think she's attempted this one. So. This ought to be cool. This ought to be cool. I'd enjoy that. Um, this may be an exciting summer for comics. Yeah. Um, okay, no I guess we can have an exciting summer for comics. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Mike. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I dropped the IQ in the room on that one, didn't I? It could have been worse. Um, I'm trying to remember what else was, uh, was announced. There's been so much going on. Um... Have y'all guys got anything? Because I'm trying to I'm trying to remember right now. Yeah. I had a list and I can't find it right now, which is par for the course. As far as the Star Wars goes, I think that's a good move on Dark Horse's part because of the success of their new Star Wars title. This would be a, a great time to jump in there with it. Well, apparently from what I have what I have heard um, is that they've been a, they've uh, talked to George about this for for a while this is they've been like met years and he's been kind of yeah I don't know about that that kind of stuff so I guess just with with everything else that's gone on the last year uh, of him giving up the reins and all that that uh, he he went ahead and said okay yeah why not Makes sense. Well, so. yeah, and you have to think that he kind of gave some sort of clearance 
on the Brian Wood um, series beforehand anyway, just because that had to have been in production for a while before it came out. And it came out pretty conveniently timed with all of the noise about the sale. Yeah. So obviously there was they were planning on making some action happen this year anyway. Yeah. And I'm totally digging the series. I think Brian Wood's oh, yeah. doing a great job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's bringing back original ideas to known characters. Yeah, it's fun stuff. It's been fun stuff so far. And I don't expect anything less from him because he, he, he puts out some good books. Yes. Um, shoot. Boy, I'm having problems tonight. I'm trying to remember some of this stuff. Else. <laughs> um, was there anything else that y'all guys want to kind of cover about what's been going on? What else happened at WonderCon? Because I swear I didn't like hear anything while it was going on well I'm uh, yeah I'm trying to go back and in as I know I had which I thought was weird because I mean when Emerald City happened it like blew up social media and then all of a sudden we get WonderCon there's kind of nothing I don't know maybe I just got lucky and was following the right people for Emerald City or what just not all the same people went to, have to WonderCon. I don't know. It was weird. Well, I'm 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 trying to check that right try, check right now. Um, because I'm trying to remember if there was a, there was stuff that I'm, that I missed, and I'm sure there was, but um. Uh, I see an article here of uh, Joss Whedon being something of a uh, major source there. It seems that he's going to do much ado about nothing. Yeah, that's true. Nothing to do about nothing. His panel, yep. Uh, I know that uh, there there has been an announcement that I think the the next DC animated movie is called Flashpoint Paradox. Huh. Which was not that big of a surprise for some of us. You remember that, Les? Yeah. Uh, for the for those who don't know what we're talking about, uh, last last May, here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, our our usual Dallas Comic Con was on, and Kevin Conroy was uh, was a guest. Now he didn't break that news there, but he did mention it. I think on one of the late night shows, and of course that went viral. So. He, he was asked about that at the con, and he said he he, could, he couldn't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, so it's not really a denial. You just can't talk about it, so it means it's actually going to happen. Okay. <laughs> so, so that apparently that will be the next movie. I've it's supposed to be I, I believe the summer. Me. Check the date there real quick. And that will bring people up to the 52, the new 52 process where any other movie now will be based on that information. Oh, holy cow. How can we forget about this? The, the whole thing with uh, Bruce Tim. How can we forget that, Mike? Oh, yeah. 
because there was there was talk at one at one point that Bruce Tim was stepping down from Warner Brothers DC Warner Brothers Animation and found out well he's really kind of stepping away from the movies. The rumor is is that he may he's taking a little break and then coming back with a new Justice League show. Show, not a movie. Oh, good. Uh, Justice League, the Flashpoint Paradox will be... It will hit Blu-ray, combo pack, DVD, on-demand, and digital download on July 30th. And Uh the synopsis is, when time travel allows a past wrong to be righted for for the Flash and the family... The ripples of the event proved disastrous as a fractured alternate reality now exists where Justice League never formed and even Superman is nowhere to be found. Teaming with a grittier, more violent Dark Knight and Cyborg, Flash races to restore the continuity of his original timeline while this new world is ravaged by a fierce war between Wonder Woman's Amazons and Aquaman's Atlanteans. With breathtaking action and all-star voice cast, it's a bold, emotional vision that will forever change the landscape of DC Universe. That sounds like it could have been a two-parter. As much information. Yeah. Um, confirmed to come back. Of course, obviously, Conroy is Batman. Uh, Jim Daly? Ro- Ro- well, there's no Superman, remember? Oh, that's right. Ron Perlman as Slade Wilson, Deathstroke. Dana Delaney returns as Lois Lane. Um, Vanessa Marshall will be doing the Wonder Woman. She did it. She did it on Crisis of Two Earths. And that's 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 all we know of right now. Of course, you know there'll be more stuff coming out here soon. Of course. As we get closer. Dun, dun, dun. Time travel. Yeah, your favorite subject there, Mikey. Kazoon height. So, what do you think? Mike? Oh, I'm sure I'll watch it, but yeah, time travel, bleh. I won't be happy about it. At least not part of it. Less. Uh, I'm ready for it. I think that would be a fun ride. The uh, characters and the, the premise are part of the DC universe, but they're changing just enough of it to make it their own. Yeah. Um, the ch- Changing gears here real quick, I did notice that the numbers came out for the month of March, and DC's numbers are still going down in regards to orders and and uh, and that kind of things. Uh, they're ba- actually back to the levels of July two thousand nine. Pre fifty two, huh? Pre fifty new pre new fifty two. Just just kind of makes you wonder what they're going to do now. Um, more than likely, everything they can think of. Yeah. Possibly including. Given Bruce Tim a new series, but anyway. Hmm. What's the highest rated magazine? Um, I'll have to pull that information up here real oh, quick. Don't worry about it. Um, I can get it real quick. Oh, I I, I got it here. Never mind. Zoom height. Uh, I got the top ten here. Uh, Batman number eighteen was ranked third. Okay. Batman, Justice League, and Justice League of America are the only ones that are in the top ten. 
the rest of it's Marvel. But you will look at it. It's Guardian of the Galaxy is one, which is number one. Age of Ultron, number one, is two. Wolverine, number one, is four. Age of Ultron, number two, is five. Age of Ultron, number three, is seven. Superior Spider-Man, number five, is eight. And all-new X-Men, number eight, is ten. Do we see a little bit of a trend there? Yeah. It's either event or number one related. But um, let me pull pull up the other numbers here. Uh, Retail market-wise for the month of of, uh, March, uh, retail market share Marvel had almost 40% compared to DC Comics 27%. That's a big difference. Yeah. Now, it, it seems like as recently as a couple of months ago, it was the differences was only maybe 5%, but now we're double digits. Yeah. Uh, unit market share, Marvel is at 43.78, so essentially 44%, and DC Comics is 29.88%, which essentially is 30%, so 44 to 30 yeah, about yeah. the same difference as the previous, or as the uh, other yep. run that you had there. And then Image Comics comes in third at 8% for both market and retail and unit market share. So. I figure IDW would be jumping up there with Walking Dead stuff. No, that's Image. Oh, Image is walking dead. Yeah. yeah. And they're running third, right? They're running third. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's kind of what you would expect. Uh, this kind of surprised me. The top ten graphic novels. Walking Dead, number volume one, is ranked fifth. When it, when it had been uh, number one there for previous couple of months, I believe. What's ahead of it? Uh, at four is Avatar: The Last Airbender, uh, Volume Four. At uh, third is Hawkeye, Volume One. Oh, hi. Uh, hi. Right. hi. Are we checking? Are you checking out? Just <laughs> 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 Mute it, you goober. Live TV. One of while he's gone, one of the things that, that I've noticed on on Twitter is that there is a bit of a push to get the Green Lantern animated series reinstated. That that in yeah, <laughs> that and Young Justice, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of upset fans. Hey, Les, how's you going? <laughs> I have nothing to say. When, when you get back, we'll show you how to work the mute button. Yeah. No. <laughs> um... Yeah, I've seen I've seen that going on on Facebook a little bit. Uh, th- there's really been a, I know there's been a big push for Young Justice, and it seems like that there's also one for uh, Green Lantern the animated series. Uh, I don't. I, I'm I've never really heard a, a real reasoning. I've I've heard different theories on, on why both those series were canceled. Uh, one theory was because the toys were not selling. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the other one was because the shows are not New 52. And I'm like, so they're replacing, they're replacing one of them with Teen Titans Go, which is a lineup that never existed in the New 52. Okay, that that kind of that's faulty logic right there too. Uh, so, 
I don't know. Uh, I've seen bits and pieces of the Teen Titans Go. It, I didn't care for the original version. This seems to be a dumber, dumbed down, funnier version. So I'm not interested in this at all. They got the original cast, voice cast back, and that's fine. But it just seems like they're going a little bit more, I guess, kid friendly or some such. To, I guess to counteract the bat, the bat, beware of the Batman. I believe that's what it's going to be called. So I, I don't I don't know, but apparently, apparently they can figure they can they, they can only have two DC animated shows going on at a time that they can't do four or three or five or six. It, it's got to be two or whatever the market demands. Well, the market de- or whatever the mar- it takes to sell books. Yeah. Well. well I just posted yesterday the July solicits for DC Comics and the final issue for Green Lantern in the animated series was solicited. Young Justice was canceled about a month or so earlier. I don't know. I don't know what the thinking is. They don't they didn't ask me. Fools. The whole the whole situation was kind of scary. Ever since they uh, ex- they they yanked the shows off, uh, two or three weeks into the to the new season, and then was off until January, and then they brought them back. And then at that point, they they said the shows were canceled, and just like okay, I wasn't a fan of the Green Lantern series. I heard it actually got better from the first season. I, I didn't like what I saw for the first season. Uh, Young Justice, I really liked. I thought it was, it was, it was so good. It was so original. It was so smart that, you know, I don't know. I I thought it was really good. I couldn't wait to watch the episodes. And then you know, between seasons one and two, they they jumped ahead five years. So now we got to find out what the heck happened during that timeline because all of a sudden, you know, but I don't know. Of course, that could be the basis of a movie. They may do an animated movie. Who knows? If they get enough reaction from viewers, I would say that they probably will. They have to do something. They they've been jumping up. The fans have been jumping up and down since the whole thing of them being yanked off the, the off the air for a month or two. Because I mean, literally, they started back in October and were on for about three weeks, and then all of a sudden, you know, they were advertised that they were going to be on there. You looked you looked at the TV guide and all that. They said they were going to be on there. They weren't on, and they just no. It's, uh, they said that I think the thing was as they were saying it was the uh, it was Cartoon Network's birthday, so they were showing uh, doing a marathon of the Dragon Show, whatever it was, or something like that. Whatever. But you know, I thought the Green Lantern was pretty good, and I thought that the stories did get better as it went. You gave I, a lot more. Character interaction. So, well, like I said, I watched, I watched, I watched a lot of the first season. It was just really not in that, not impressed. So obviously, the writing got better on the second season. So you know, I, I'll probably go, I'll probably check it out at some point. But um, um, I was really upset about Young Justice because I thought it was a well, well done show. Uh. It deserved a better fate than it received, but yeah. But we have some people out there that says DC stands for damage control now, so I'm like, I kind of laughed at that. So it seems like what they do is they shoot them, shoot them, they spend more time trying to correct the shooting themselves in the foot than anything else, so who knows. Now, hopefully, they can right ship. So, 
Okay, so uh, anything else before we call it an evening? What are you doing? It's only 4 o'clock. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. 4 o'clock. Must be nice. 4 o'clock, you got room service beating down your door. Chugging on your Mai Tai over there on the side. I saw that. <laughs> they, were, they just wanted to get me out of the room is what it was. Beautiful afternoon in sunny Hawaii. Who, what, who can blame them? Me. Hang on, hang on a second here. Second time. Okay, we'll just sit here and fill time and, and be pretty while you play with whatever it is you're playing. Uh, well, someone would like to join us, so I'm trying to see if I can invite him. He's in the chat room. Well, yeah, I know he's in the chat room, but I thought he was wanting to be in, invited on. Oh well, I can't come. I his name didn't pop up on the on the Google Hangout. What's the name? That's Chris Ross. Oh, is it? Let me see. I'm I'm trying. Um, I'm having problems, so I'm sorry there, Chris. We'll get you. We'll get you involved on our next show, and I apologize for that. Um, we were going to go ahead and wrap things up tonight anyway. Uh, so I do apologize for that, Chris. Uh, I do appreciate you joining us in. Uh, and we'll, we might as well go ahead and plug our show for for next time. Um. Be two weeks from tonight, from tonight, which would be the twenty third. Be twenty third, and that so that means that will be our summer movie preview. All right. There's movies coming out this summer. Yeah, something like that. Apparently, I need to get on the homework bandwagon there. Huh? Yeah, maybe. So, um, anything, anything, y'all guys would like to add before we shut it down for the evening? Not me. I'm, I'm pretty good. I think we're groovy. Yeah, you need, you need to start shutting down and packing things up, guys, so you can get back over here. Oh, come on. Well, yeah, we know we we know we know you like being out on the beach and just soaking the sun, but we really do want to get back over here. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready to come back. Oh yeah, he's all burned out on Hawaii now. Yeah, too can't much, you? Too much pineapple and grass skirts for him. I tell you, life sucks in Hawaii. I say, I gotta say. He stepped on the pop top too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's in his room sucking on a Mai Tai. It doesn't have anything to do with us. <laughs> we, 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 were just, we were SOL last week, and we are like, we we're likely to be just as SOL this week. Um, one more thing before we uh, wrap things up tonight. Uh, I do want to mention those who live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that this Saturday... Uh, we have the North Dallas Comic Convention. Uh, it takes place at uh, the Doubletree Hotel by Dallas Market Center. It's at 2015 Market Center Boulevard uh, here in Dallas. It's just off 35 near uh, Medieval Times and behind the Hilton Anatole. Uh, it's only for $5.00. Kids under 12 can get in free. Uh, it's just Saturday, but it's their. Uh, they have a theme this time. It's Day of the Deadpool, 
where you can meet art, Deadpool artist Carlo Barbieri and Deadpool Merc with a Mouth writer Victor Gishler. Um, so it ought to be fun. Uh, I know Les and I will be there. I know, I know James from a Galaxy Called Dallas will be there. Uh, there's going to be a few other people. The Costume Crusaders are supposed to be there. Our friend Taffy the Darling is supposed to be there. So it, it's it, there's going to it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you can make it out, uh, make it out there. It's from like 9:30 to five. Um, uh, let me get that web address if you want to check it out. Um, it is comic books, comic books, Dallas.com. That's one word. Comic books, Dallas. So check it out and hopefully we'll see you there. With that, we thank you for watching either live with us or in replays. Uh, please spread the word about us. Uh, obviously, the website is www.dfellowshipofthegeeks.net. Uh, we're on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Fellowship of the Geeks. Uh, on Twitter, we're at Fellowship Geeks. And on Google+, Plus, we're a big, it's a big long number. You just go ahead and just go to the website, there's all the all the the links to our social media. So join us, follow us, and join in the fun. So with that, we wish you a good evening, and we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks with our summer summer movie preview and an announcement about the future of the show. So until then, drama, drama. Y'all guys, take it easy. Good night. Bye. Good night.